thank you for tuning in to HR Revivals, where it's always the hour for revival. I am your brother in the Lord, Brother HR, and it's always the hour for revival. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad you could tune in to the 12th installment of Heart to Heart. Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The 12th installment. I am excited about this video. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to talk about today how to get the spirit spouse out of your house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Judges chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Judges chapter 2, verses 16 through 17. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that you would anoint the service today, that you would anoint the reading of your word, and bless each and every viewer of this broadcast, that they would no longer become just hearers of the word, but become doers of the word, and followers of the way. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father God. Yeshua, I bless you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn me to the book of Ju Judges, 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 the second chapter. And uh, I'm going to begin to read from verse 16 and onward. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto the judges, but they went a whoring after other gods, little g, and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. Their fathers obeyed the commandments of the Lord. Their forefathers, their grandfathers, their aunts and uncles, they obeyed the word of God. But these people were rebellious. And remember that rebellion is as the sin, watch this, of witchcraft. So I'm going to talk about how to get the spirit spouse out of your house. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. So they left the love of their fathers and the one they claimed to love and was led into spiritual adultery. See, they married their self to madness instead of mercy by going and whoring after other gods. They were married to God, but they went off after other gods. They went off for another relationship. Let me explain something to you, my friends. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible says in the book of James, it, it shows us the process. Things start out easy. They start out gentle. And, and you know, then it leads to spiritual touching. And then it leads to bearing spiritual things. You know, they say first comes love, then comes marriage. Let me explain something to you. Then it comes you putting a baby, pushing a baby carriage. Let me explain to, to you what happens. You fall into lust. Then once lust has got a hold of you, it bringeth forth sin. And once sin is done, it bringeth forth death. 
and I know I'm paraphrasing there, but it's in the book of James, and it talks about the process of how sin works. But let me explain something to you. Remember God had them, the, the, God had His prophet marry a prostitute. And her name was Gomer. Well, after He marries the prostitute, they have children. And the name of these children are the names of the sins that Israel was in during the time that God allowed this to take place. Now, this is interesting to me. The Lord showed me something about the prophet Mary and Gomer and them having children and them children being named after the sins of Israel. The Lord was showing them, hey, you've married other gods. You've gone and you have been married to me, but now you've gone out and married spiritually other people, other things, other gods. You're, you're out there with other gods now and you're conceiving while you've been being deceived, you've conceived. And you're bearing other spiritual children from your spiritual running around. Amen? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Tina, God bless you. Brother Moore, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the one they claimed to love, they left their first love and went after other gods. Check this out. The Spirit says in the last days that some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and demons. They're going to go into a relationship with demons. They're going to go into a relationship contract with demonic power and these demons are going to seduce them. They're going to lure them away from the love of God. They're going to lure them away, or try to. They're going to lure them away from the faith that they once knew in Christ. This happened to be the case with Solomon, the king, the wisest king in the Bible. The Bible says that his wives that he took for himself that God told him not to take he married himself to them whenever you sleep with somebody you create a soul tie you ain't even got to sleep with somebody to have a soul tie just being around them and them being in fellowship with you creates a soul tie there is godly soul ties and there's ungodly soul ties David mentioned that to his brother-in-law and he, he, he said, my soul is knitted together with yours. We are, we are blood brothers forever. We are together. We got a soul tie. But there's a difference between a soul tie and a spirit spouse, and I'm getting ready to go into that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, he marries these women and they lead Solomon into a time of witchcraft. He studies the goddess Ashtoreth. And Ashtoreth is the goddess of immoral acts, sexual acts. And he goes off into other gods. And the Bible said when he died, 1 Kings 11 and 4, his heart was not right with God fully as David his father's was. This goddess Ashtoreth is a spirit spouse. They will marry themselves to people and they will even... I, I'm going to say it like this. They will become a control in your life. Listen to this. 
He followed a woman goddess, a spirit spouse by the name of Astra. They have the the uh, spirit spouses have two names: incubus and succubus, male and female. But I got good news for you. I hear in my spirit by the Lord that there is somebody going to be watching this that has sexually been raped in their dreams. They have been molested by these demon spirits. God is going to deliver you today from that demonic attack. It is nothing more than a demonic power attacking your life. Well, let me explain some things to you right now. God is married to the backslider. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He is right where you left him. God never left you. You left God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He's right where you left him at the altar. And here is some great news. He's waiting for you to come back home. He's waiting for you to reach out your hands and say, Jesus, I can't do this anymore. I'm sinking in spiritual quicksand and I need you to help me. And He'll reach where you are. Where you can't reach, He'll reach. And He'll pull you up. Guess what? He won't hold you down. He'll pull you up. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. I want you to hear this. Remember the story of the prodigal son? The Bible said that the prodigal son was still afar off, but the father saw him while he was still afar off, came to him, ran to him, and fell on his neck and kissed him and loved on him and told the servants, go get some clothes for him and put a ring on his finger. See what the church would do the priests the rabbis when they got out of church they'd stand by the city gates and they would ridicule and mock and belittle anybody that had left their father's house when they were trying to come back home that's what happened with Paul's issue where he had to excommunicate somebody from the church for a sinful act and when they were reunited in the church, the church still wanted to egg it on and still wanted to bring up the past. And Paul said, shut up. I don't want to hear no more about it. He's been forgiven. He's been restored. You keep your nose out of God's business. Amen. You keep your nose out of God's business. That's basically what Paul was telling them. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. So many times we want to play the judge. But the Father in heaven says, I won't allow you to be ridiculed. I'm going to meet you where you are. I'm going to clothe you in righteousness. So when they see me and you walking back in the city, they're going to think you were with me. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God said in His Word through Solomon, through the songs of Solomon. Solomon said that his love for the daughters was like lily among thorns. God loves you even at the risk of you hurting Him. His love for you is incredible. It goes far beyond any human understanding. God said, I can't live without them. So He left all of heaven and its glory and came as a man to die for you that you could live with Him. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. God is right where you left Him. Remember, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4, He said, 
I have something against you that you left your first love. Realize where you've fallen and repent. Turn back to where you left your love. Your love is waiting on you, baby. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah to the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Revelation 2 and 4. He said, realize where you've fallen. You've left your first love. Realize where you've fallen and repent. Come back to me. Or I'll come and remove the candlestick, the church, from its place. He said, I don't want to remove that church, but I will if I have to. See, the Bible said, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for all. He is married to us. There is only one spouse in your soul you should be married to, and that is God. You are married to God. You are no longer, when you accept Jesus, you are no longer your own. You become one with the Spirit of God instead of, ah, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something, honey. Instead of one flesh, you're one spirit with God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says when we become married, we become, the two become one flesh, but with Adam, it was flesh. But with Jesus, <laughs> glory to God. He said, we become one spirit with Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Well, you know what? That works two ways. If there is a spiritual relationship and connection and marriage between God and man, that's why God walked through the fire with Abraham when He was establishing a covenant with Abraham. He walked through the fire. And the smoke and the uh, the meat that was there. This was all a Jewish wedding. God was marrying himself to Abraham. He said, I'm making a covenant with you. You are my spouse. I am betrothed to you. I'm marrying myself to your life. Somebody help me preach this word. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody shout. I'm preaching a lot better than y'all shouting today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, glory, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. Jezebel is a spirit spouse. I was going to save this for Wednesday, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a, uh, a rundown on it that the Lord showed me. I begin to look up the story of Dagon. Dagon was a marina spirit, and he was also worshipped as half man, half fish. And, you know, the marina people call him something else in Jamaica. They, and in the sea, he's the god, little g, of the sea. But hold on, wait a minute now. People are so simple that they don't even realize the devil is right in front of them. Anyways, let me explain to you what his name is in the Disney world. In the world of Disney, his name is Trident. Isn't it interesting that Trident Spear has three points? Satan always wanted to be God. So he's made his own three-chord strand, a Trident. The triune God, it's a blasphemy, it's a mockery of the true God. But also, in Ecclesiastes, the Bible says that a three-chord strand cannot easily be broken. And I know a lot of people say when a demon will mark somebody's body with three claw marks down the back, that is a mockery of the Holy Trinity. But I prayed about that. And the Lord spoke to me and He said, Do you really want to know what they're doing? I said, Yeah. I said, I want to know what the claw marks are all about. Is it really a mockery of your spirit or what is it? And the Lord said, It's a three-chord strand that cannot easily be broken. They are creating documentation, basically. This is mine. They're putting a mark on their property, a three-chord strand on their backs of their people, on the arms. 
they're saying this is my property. A three chord strand, they're making a statement. We got something against you. We're stronger than you. That's what they're telling them people. And in their minds they feel, I've heard it so many times, they felt weak, they felt helpless. Why? Because a strand, a strong man was coming against them. But let me explain something to you. Sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, do you understand what happened when the Dagon statue got in the presence of God? Dagon got gone. Why? What happened to Dagon? The Bible records that after three days, every time that demon would be on its face before God, it would bow down. It could not stand in the presence of God. First few times, everything was fine. The statue was not harmed. But the third time that they put this before God, it was destroyed. And check this out. The Bible says that Dagon's head, his hands, and his stump were removed. His stump was left to him, but what it... Check this out. They got... The Philistines borrowed other gods from other people. Who did they borrow it from? Jezebel's people. Because isn't it interesting, when Jezebel dies, her head, her hands, and her feet is all that is left. The dogs have lapped it up. He destroyed the head. He destroyed the power of Jezebel. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Destroyed her power. Destroyed her hands. He destroyed her way of working against the church. And then destroyed her feet. Left Her, her feet were removed. Her establishment, her foundation was shaken. Her foundation was removed from her. She could no longer walk out the assault against the body of Christ. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Amen. But do you know... And he even acknowledges, Jesus acknowledges, he said, I have something against you that you've left your first love. But he talks about that he will, let, let, let me say this, there are going to be those that try to sneak in without the wedding garments. Matthew 22, 11 through 13, and they will be cast out into everlasting darkness. For there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now even in Jesus rebuking the people that he loved. He said this. He takes note of his love for them and their love for him. He said, you've not denied my name. And he said, you will walk with me in white for you are worthy. He got on to every one of the churches, but he said it to this one. You will walk with me in white for you are worthy. He said, I love you. He said, I'm proud of you. He said, you got some things to work out. Every church except one had something to work out. To get to heaven, we are to have our garments spotless by the blood of Jesus Christ. No one is perfect. No, not one. There is not one perfect among you. That's what Paul said. No, not one, but Jesus only. He is the only one that is perfect. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Amen. Revelation 3 and 4. But to have our garments white, we need to do what is right in God's sight. And the spirit spouse has to get out of the house the inner man the soul ties the ungodly soul ties the godly soul ties can stay but the ungodly have to go 
in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The one prophet of God in the Bible was declaring woe was on everybody till God got a hold of him and he said, woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips for I am around those with unclean lips. What we permit is what we participate in. See, the Bible said there is pleasure in sin for a season, but there's coming a time, honey, when the fig leaves are going to fall off. Why? Because they're no longer connected to the vine. They're no longer connected to the branch. So if they're no longer connected, they cannot live. It'll cover for a season. There's pleasure for a season. But after that, then comes judgment. The Bible says be sure your sins will find you out. God told a king that was dying, he said get your house in order. And he goes to the wall and weeps and repents and he says Lord you know I've got my house in order. If God told him to get it in order it had to be out of order. But then he gets arrogant with God and says, show me a sign that I'm going to live. Because the prophet, when he repents, God says, I'm going to save him. He says to the prophet of God, go into the king's courtyard. He says, turn back and tell him I'll give him 15 more years. This king tells God, I want a sign of what you're telling me is the truth. How many times do we hear from God and still don't believe what he says? That's why God didn't tell Habakkuk what he was going to do. That's the only time he didn't really reveal anything to his servant, the prophet. He tells Habakkuk, he says, I'm going to do something so great you wouldn't even believe it. Because Habakkuk said, tell me, Lord, what's your plan? He said, no, I ain't going to do it. He said, it's so great you won't even be able to understand it. You won't be able to bear it. I can't tell you my plan. Not this time, Habakkuk. But he did reveal that he was going to do a plan. Woo, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Are y'all hearing me? He did reveal he was going to do a thing. He said, I don't do anything without first revealing it to my servants, the prophets. And he said, I'm going to do something, Habakkuk. But he didn't tell him what he was going to do. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. I'm going to show you some names of some demon spirits that are actually spirit spouses in a lot of our houses. Jezebel. Top demon right there. But let me explain something about uh, Dagon. When God destroyed Dagon and left only his stump to him, Dagon was a strong man. And then the bottom part of him was a fish. What did God do before He destroyed the house of Dagon? He destroyed the strong man. He, and Jesus even mentioned it. He said, how can you go into the house of the strong man and spoil his goods lest you first bind him up? Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. He destroyed the strong man. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Demons, especially spirit spouses, walk under different names. Jezebel, Lilith. Lilith, according to Jewish tradition, according to Jewish theology, uh, mythology, Jewish mythology, and according to some of the missing books, Lilith was the wife, spirit wife, not physical wife, but the spiritual wife of Adam. Isn't it interesting when Adam married Eve by God's grace that they had a fallen away? Why? He didn't deal. If, if what we understand of mythology is accurate, he had a spirit spouse and he didn't deal with his spirit spouse. We can say it like that. And that's why Eve and his marriage didn't work out. How come? Because there's a lot of people that go into a marriage with a spirit spouse 
attached to their life. They're married to somebody else in their heart. Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery, adultery with her in your heart. So there is a spirit spouse in the inner house, and you're connected to that person. And Lilith, a spirit spouse, goes after the marriage. Jezebel goes after the prophecy and the prophet of the marriage because notice this. You can see Jezebel and Lilith at work in the day of John the Baptist who had the spirit of Elijah, Mark 6, 23. Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel was in that woman, Herodias. Herodias the queen of the Philistines. Come on now. She uh, she was related to the Philistines. Or Romans, sorry, not Philistines, Romans. The queen of the Roman people who slept with her husband's brother. Check this out. Wanted the head of John the Baptist so much. Wanted the prophet Elijah, the, or, or the prophet that represented the spirit of Elijah, wanted him dead so bad she had her daughter dance almost naked for the king, and the king fell into lust. When lust was conceived, then it brought forth, it birthed d death. And he said, I'll give you up to a third of my kingdom. How much are we willing to give up, it seems, for a little pleasure in our life? That man gave up his king, was willing to give up his kingdom for a piece of tail. For sexual gratification, was willing to give up his power that was offered to him. power that he killed for. Herodias is another spirit spouse. It's another name. Herodias is a spirit spouse. Mark 6, 23. Come to Jesus, though, and he will remarry you. He will redeem you from your own life. And he'll do three things. He'll meet you at the altar. Watch this. He'll bless you. And he'll give you his name. Book of Revelation talks about how we are given new names. When you come to the altar, truly submitting your life to Jesus Christ, forsaking all others. My Lord have mercy. Don't you get the vows of the wedding? It's the vows of God. He said we need to forsake all other gods, all other things. We need to forsake it and be married to Him. Listen to me now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 5.25, God will marry you to Himself. Let's just go to the last one right here. Matthew 5. I'm sorry, Matthew 25 and 12, and I'm closing after this. What happened with the death of Jesus, the ripping of the veil, the blood and the water, this was all symbolic of a wedding night. God was saying, I'm marrying myself to my body. This is my church. I belong to them. They belong to to me because what was the prayer of the son to the father in the garden father make them one as you and I are one so the vow is these two shall become one flesh but let me explain something to you that's for humanity but with divinity let me explain something to you the two become one spirit that's also what happens when the two become one flesh they also become one spirit. So let me tell you something. You are married to someone else. 
You're married to Jesus and that's how you need to address your life. You ain't single, honey. You are married to God. Somebody needed to hear this message today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Matthew 25. Hallelujah, Jesus. Verses 1. I mean, verse 12. Matthew 25 and 12. Actually, go to verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Open the door. But the an but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I do not know you. That word do not know you does not mean to have knowledge of. It literally means to have a relationship like a husband would a wife. Intimacy is what it means. He said, you claim my name, but you don't know me. Let me tell you something. To say to God, Lord, I swear if you'll just do this for me, then this will happen or this won't happen again. You And you do this or you don't do that. You have took the name of God in vain. You say, Lord, I'm married to you, but yet you still live like you're spiritually single. You've got a spirit that you are married to. We are married to Christ. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. But for those of you that have got soul ties that are ungodly, we're going to break that power right now in the name of Jesus. First off, before we can break the power, you've got to renounce every spirit spouse that does not belong to God. Everything that does not belong to God, you got to repent of right now in the name of Jesus. You're watching me on Heart to Heart today at the 12th installment, and you're saying, Brother HR, that's me. Pray with me. Pray this prayer right now. Dear Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I believe that you died on the cross that God the Father raised you from the dead, and I am saved. Lord Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit, that I might make heaven my home. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Right now, let me pray with you. Pray this, dear Jesus, I forsake all other gods, all other things that I have put before you, whether it be television, drugs, people, whatever pleasures that were being put above you, I repent of them now, and I put them under your blood, and I lay them at your feet, Lord Jesus. Lord, I renounce every spirit spouse and every ungodly soul tie in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, forgive me, for putting other things and other people above you. Lord Jesus, set me free by your power. I renounce Lilith. I renounce Jezebel. I renounce Herodias. I renounce Ashtroth in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. And amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Father, right now I declare that by the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Jesus Christ, that divideth even to the bone and marrow and asunder, Father God, of, of even the blood vessels. Father God, I thank you that he, you're going through their life right now and it's like a sword cutting through every demonic soul tie that's been placed in their life. It's being severed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And what has been severed by the blood, what's been severed by the word, can never be mended again. In the name of Jesus, set people free from every demonic oppression, every demonic anxiety. I renounce in the name of Jesus every ungodly soul tie off of your life. We break its power. We destroy it by the anointing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. We renounce incubus and succubus in the name of Jesus. Every spirit spouse that's been responsible for keeping your marriage divided 
for trying to bring pornography into the bedroom, for trying to make you sleep with somebody that you know you shouldn't be sleeping with. I break and destroy that power by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I renounce every blood covenant in Jesus' name that's been given under marriages that were not tied into God, that were not made by God. I renounce those soul ties in Jesus' name, and I cover these people watching the children of God with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Amen. For those watching me, if you're sick in your body, I curse every spirit of infirmity. I command a creative miracle from the body part rooms in heaven in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet, I command a total creative miracle in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I rebuke every spirit of bondage. Every spirit of condemnation has to go right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of molestation you are rebuked and removed from their life in Jesus' name. It is excommunicated this very day. We have no more relationship with molestation in the name of Jesus. Somebody needed to pray that right now in Jesus' name. Somebody needs to pray this as well. Father, I give you my hands to do your will. Lord, I make a covenant with my eyes that I will not sin against you or my wife. And Lord, I give you my hands, that I make a covenant with my hands, that I would not sin against you sexually. In the name of Jesus, right now, I curse the spirit of masturbation, which is actually under another name. It's under the name of of the man that actually did the act. Onan. The spirit of Onan. That, spi that spirit spouse Onan. I break his power now in the name of Jesus and destroy it by the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. People are being freed from masturbation in the name of Jesus. People are being freed from all sexual immorality in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, Lord, that they have professed you and repented of their sins, Father, fill them with the Holy Ghost and fire from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, from the top of their head, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Fill them in their belly, God. Fill their belly with the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God. In Jesus' name, Rosha Katabareta, Reba Baba Shay. Jesus, you're the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. Brosho Kore Basta, Breda Bahanda Rabo Shay, Alabasanda. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel the anointing of God all over this video. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, one more thing before I close. Thank you, Jesus. Did you know that there is an interesting fact? That Glory. I feel the presence of God right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord Jesus. Glory, Lord. Amen. Who, Jesus. Ramoshin, Amahanda, Kidibushanda, Remamahanda, Debushai. Don't doubt what you have heard, says the Lord, but receive what you have heard. Receive and believe and go free says the Spirit of Grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Roche Remak Asandeliko Shandorabusai. Well, I was gonna say something, but the Lord just cut that 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 word. He, he said not not the time is what I heard the Lord say. I was getting ready to release something. And then the Lord came with that word instead. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. So 
With that being said, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to Hour Full Revival. Thank you for tuning in to this episode, the 12th installment of Heart to Heart. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you in the next meeting or in the air in heaven. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye. Tune in next week. Amen. A Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm going to be preaching about the thing I was just talking about, about Dagon and Jezebel. I'm going to be going into deeper detail of it called On the Other Hand. I have a special guest, Daniel Lewis. He's a brother in Christ now, and he's an amazing buddy in the Lord. And I'm going to have him on the broadcast Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Might be 5 o'clock. I don't remember what I wrote. So, hallelujah. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you there in the next week or in the air in heaven. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this on YouTube. I love you. Hit the bell notification. I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.